to Purdue's 1966 foot cabins once in a lifetime, an invitation to play in the coveted Rose Bowl game. It was a determined group of men that stepped off the plane in Los Angeles to be met by the Tournament of Roses Queen and her court. Coach Malenkov exhibited the real mood of the day. For a team that had just missed bids to the Rose Bowl the last two years, this was it. Earlier in the year, Coach Malenkov had said, we were within two plays of going in 1964 and within one play in 1965. But now, 1966, and here they were getting ready for the biggest bowl of them all. The patio of Pasadena's Huntington Sheraton Hotel was the setting for the group's first taste of real Western hospitality, the Tournament of Roses reception, with the traditional tossing of oranges to the team by Rose Queen Barbara Hewitt and her court of sick Pasadena beauty. Photo day on the practice field gave the local news media an opportunity to get acquainted with the Boilermaker squad. Photographers and newsreel men took pictures from every angle as Coach Mollenkopf set up shot after shot to satisfy the seemingly endless requests for just one more, Coach. Pleasant, warm day, an inviting expanse of green lawn, a football, and football players do what comes naturally. In spite of long hours of hard practice, some enjoyed the opportunity to get together and just lob the ball around. While George Catavalis and Bob Greasy, co-captains for the game, autographed the ball for the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame. Some of the others enjoyed just sitting beside the pool. Or if your wife was along, you might have enjoyed a stroll through the gardens of the hotel. A change of pace, a few lounged in their rooms and watched some of the other bowl games on television. If anyone mentioned cards, though, there was a game of euchre, hearts, or bridge going on in a matter of minutes. The Tournament of Roses officials anticipated every need for the team, even to the extent of having chauffeur-driven cars available to take them wherever they wanted to go. Some went sightseeing, some to entertainment centers, and some just shopping. A few were fortunate enough to have the beautiful rhododendron queen of North Carolina help select their gift. One can always tell when the meals at a football training table are good. Very few players were ever late, and no one ever missed a meal in Pasadena. It takes a lot of good food to satisfy a 218-pound lineman that burns up energy by the minute when he's in action. Yet, no one ever left the training table hungry.
Many of the men spent hours reviewing films of the opposing team in order to study their plays and to determine the movements for their counterparts. Forward and backward, they ran the films until the actions of the opponents were almost as familiar as their own. Not only did the team study for the game, but the coaches had their homework to do as well. Organize the practice, set up the offense, plot the action. What plays will they call in a third down situation? How will we defense them? Football today is organized like an army battle with alternative plans of action. Many games have been won or lost in the strategy planning session. Wives and families of the coaches and players arrived the day before Christmas. The group was actually the vanguard of some 17,000 students, alumni, and friends that assembled from all over the United States to help Purdue celebrate its first Rose Bowl bid. Over 23 plane loads came from Indiana alone. Lieutenant Governor and Mrs. Rock and members of the university party arrived later in the week take part in the official function. Again, the Tournament of Roses staff was on hand with its fleet of cars to transport the guests. The Biltmore Hotel in Midtown Los Angeles was the headquarters for the alumni and official party. Ralph Thompson, president of the Board of Trustees, and an ardent football fan, was one of the first to check in. A full week of dinners, parties, tours, and get-togethers for the grads was arranged through the alumni office. 